Hello everyone, welcome to another time lapse sketching tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to sketch this with pencil and watercolor using this reference photo which you can download in the video description below. This is the Southern Mosque of Singapore, one of the oldest mosques here. And this view is from the street called Jalan Pinang. If I were to sketch this on location, it would mean I have to be in the middle of the street, which is quite dangerous. So the alternative is to take a reference photo and draw from that. So instead of using ink today, I'll be using pencil just to uh, do or try something different. Now, one of the things with sketching with pencil is um, because you know you are sketching with pencil, so there is this tendency to want to go and erase. So when I am sketching with ink, I tend to be a bit more careful, but when sketching with pencil, um, I sort of know that I can erase, so sometimes I'm a bit more careless. So for this particular scene, I wanted to make sure that the top of the mosque, the dome, and the uh, crescent and the star they must be in the scene i have visualized on the page where the top and where the bottom is so when i draw i have to draw all the details between the top and the bottom there are some cars parked along this street so i have to draw them first because they overlap the mosque for the finishing point of the shop houses on the left side that finishing point is quite close to the side mirror of the car that I have just drawn. So when I'm drawing the diagonal lines for the shop houses, I point the diagonal lines to the side mirror. It's easier this way compared to drawing those angles from observation. Now this part here, the top left part, it's a bit challenging because of perspective and because the roofs, sometimes the lines they go up, sometimes they go down. So when drawing that particular part, be very careful um, to get the angles right. You can use your pencil to measure the angles that will make your uh, judgment more accurate rather than just relying on your eyes because sometimes uh, the perspective um, they may play tricks on your eyes. So if you want to be sure, you can use your pencil, stretch out your arm, lock your elbows and use your pencil to measure the angle. That way you will definitely get the right angle. So after drawing the moss, I'm just filling in the details within the shapes that I have already drawn. The pencil that I'm using, it's the very typical wooden pencil which gets blunt very quickly so with this pencil I am not able to draw with a lot of detail so I have to draw only the big ships. The angles for the roofs here they are also a bit challenging so make sure you measure them with your pencil and these are the windows there. Now this view it's very compressed there is a lot of foreshortening so we don't see a lot of the windows so I'm just um, drawing some of the windows based on uh, my artistic impression and I simplify a lot of those windows there. And that's the other car behind the first car. There are a few pillars below the windows. I represent them with vertical lines because it's very difficult to draw all the details, especially when there is so much foreshortening. And here I'm reaching the top right side. Now the perspective here, um, all the diagonal lines, they actually go to a vanishing point. So when you're drawing this, make sure you find that vanishing point first before you draw. Um, by identifying where the vanishing point is, you can use that to make your sketch more accurate because you can always check back to where the lines are leading to. Right, so for the painting, I will be using a limited color palette. The watercolor brand I'm using is Renaissance, made in Poland, and the colors are PY83, PR48, and PG50. 
this PG50, um, I mean, usually PG50, it's quite greenish, but for some reason, this PG50, Cobalt Turquoise, it's quite blue. So I started by wetting the sky and painting the blue. And for this dome, it's just concentrated Indian yellow, PY83. For the highlights, I'm just using the uh, tissue to dry that particular part. So all the other colors, the secondary colors that you see, the orange, the greens, and this uh, neutralized gray wash for the shadows, these are all mixed with the three colors. It's easier to achieve color harmony when you are using a limited color palette. And there is a lot less to uh, think about when it comes to color mixing. If you have too many colors, sometimes it can get a bit confusing as to uh, which colors you should use for mixing. So by using a limited color palette, it's so much easier. For the shadows uh, here, for the building on the right side, it's a bit darker than I uh, expected. It's, I would say it's a mistake, but it still looks all right. Uh, it's a mistake only because when I look at this particular sketch, um, that building, which is supposed to be white, it doesn't appear to be white. So that's the only reason. So when painting the cars, uh, make sure you paint the big ships first. Make sure you get the recognizable shape of the car out first before you paint in subsequent uh, reflections or shadows for the cars. The big ship have to be recognizable before you paint the little ships within. If the big shape is not recognizable, um, whatever shadows or details that you add later on, they will not uh, matter as much because it's not, I mean, whatever you're drawing or painting, it's not recognizable. So whatever details that you add later on, it's not going to help as much. So laying down the right shapes, painting the right shapes first, it's very important, it's very crucial. So the building on the right side definitely needs to be much lighter. Sometimes when you are focusing on painting small areas, you can lose track of how the overall sketch or painting may look. I think that's what happened here. I'm just adding some little details to places that I have accidentally missed out. By the way, this tutorial, this is actually the condensed version of the full-length video tutorial that I have made for my patrons. So if you guys want to check out the full tutorial with the video playing at uh, normal speed, you can support me on Patreon. I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot more instructions um, in my Patreon videos. So for the bottom here, um, those are splatter marks that I created by running the brush against the clip. That's a very easy way to create splatter marks. And the clips are something that I always bring outdoors together with my sketchbook. So I will always have the clips with me. So it's very easy to create splatter marks with that. So uh, make sure that the shape of the car, it's very recognizable. And we have the black car in front and this white or silver car behind. It's a good contrast, which makes the car separate from each other. And I can add a little bit more details here. All right, this sketch is almost complete. If you guys have any questions regarding sketching or watercolor, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to learn more about sketching with watercolor, you can check out the many free YouTube tutorials that I have made over the years. The link to all those tutorials are in the video description below. And do consider supporting me on Patreon because it is with your patron support that I am able to create so many videos um, that I'm able to create this huge variety of videos on my YouTube channel. So thank you uh, very much to all my patrons. Okay, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.